We magnify your name. We wait on you this evening. We pray that your spirit may be with us. Lord, we have dedicated a week to the Holy Ghost. We pray that you send him to us. We pray that he may work in us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands to the Lord and take your seat, please. It's my joy to be here once again. Every time I come here, things are getting even more beautiful. Hallelujah, I think I need to come every week. I want to thank God for the great work he's doing here. It's part of a great work God promised to do in this season in our nation. I want to thank God for Bishop Bernard's and his beautiful wife Annette for what they mean to the nation. You may not know, but your pastor is a very useful person in the kingdom. He adds to my life. Adds a lot to my ministry. I thank God for knowing him and serving with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think every day I'll be speaking something a little bit about him. That we may redeem time, but I have a lot to share. Um, about having meaningful ministers standing with you. In these difficult days, so we thank God for the gifts that He has given us. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are discussing the Holy Spirit. Today I'll be a little bit slow. I'll catch up with more speed next the tomorrow when we are getting on the subject matter deeper. I love talking about the Holy Spirit. I love sharing with people about the Holy Spirit. Because I think it is one of the best things Experiencing him is one of the best things that has ever happened to my life. I'm a student of the Holy Spirit. I'm a host of the Holy Spirit. I learn a lot about the Holy Spirit reading from many books. Um, today, I'm also going to refer to a book written by Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is not a very good author, but there, are some book, there is a book he wrote which is called Good Morning, Holy Spirit. And for the way he approached his, that book, that's the way maybe God will help me approach my message this evening. Because as the title suggests, Good Morning Holy Spirit. He makes the Holy Spirit personal. And he makes you know a little bit deeper on how to relate with him. In the 1980s, when we were getting saved here, 
Our churches were referred to as the churches of the Holy Spirit. And we have backslidden this far. <laughs> they called us all other names until we lost the title we should have been proud of. But we are a church of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray again as I go into the word. Father, bless the preaching of the word. May the words that shall come out of my mouth be food to the souls of your children. Let these words be healing to those who seek healing. Direction to those who seek direction. And I pray that Lord, as the word comes, we diminish, we decrease as you increase. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Christianity, we believe in a God of three persons. It is rarely preached, but we are going to preach it today. Our God is one God in three persons. And he is, the three persons are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those are not separate entities. Actually, they, they are one. The three of them make one, one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are separate in person and in function. They have unique roles which they do together in agreement and yet they remain one. So the Holy Spirit is God. He is the Holy Spirit. is God. Jesus is God. The Father is God. It, it, it is not mathematics. It is faith. Just like you may be led to understand that ice is water, vapor is water, and what else? And liquid water is water. Those are so even, even that can help you understand the essence that you have one God but in three persons. It is better said that you believe it, you don't calculate it. You believe it, you will understand it better. Because our math will fail us. Now, if there are three persons, then there must be three major experiences you encounter in God. The, God is love. Love is mutual. You, ha you, you have to love one another. So for you to love a person, you must know him and you must know how to interact with him. So though God is one, we interact with him in three persons. That means your mind must come to a point of deciphering how you can relate with the Father, how you can relate with the Son, and how you can relate with the Holy Spirit. What you realize is that once you handle the Father well, he sends you to the Son 
Once you handle the son well, he sends you to the Holy Spirit. And in the other way, once you handle the Holy Spirit well, he introduces you to the son. Once you understand, you, he introduces you to the son, the son introduces you to the father. You, you, you develop in your relationship with that. Yes. It is a chain of, of, of benefits relating with one God in three persons. Amen. Am I doing well there? <laughs> so, really what I'm trying to show you. Sometimes when you are relating, let me take it to a simple simple human relationships. There are sometimes when we are we are relating, let me say husband and wife relationship. There are some men who are very good husbands but very poor fathers. The children complain about the father role but the, 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 the wife lives the husband role. And there are those who relate with, um, with, with, with their daddy well as a financer, but not as a father. But what the scriptures show you is you must develop an appropriate relationship with the entire trinity. I hope I'm understood there. So we go to the father knowing we have a particular way we relate with the father, we have a particular way we relate with the son, and we have the particular way we relate with the Holy Ghost. So it, it is knowing what, let me give you this scripture, I think that one will help me summarize my beginning. Uh, I hope I'll find it. Second Corinthians is it 2 Corinthians 13? Shows the economy of the Holy Spirit. It's in the benediction. Chapter 13, verse 14. Here we see a scripture that captures our relationship with the Trinity. We, we use it most as a benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now if you are underlining, you already see that in the economy of God when you are relating with the Holy, with the, with Jesus it's about grace now if you are a student of how you will relate with the with the Lord in the approaching him by grace you will find the manifold grace of God you will find a spectrum of gracious things that the, Holy Spirit, the, the Lord brings. Because the Holy Spirit so now, when we come to the love of the Father, then we wouldn't really say the love, agape here, is the grace up there. Because the Holy but it feeds into the other. 
an overlap of expression. So once I find the grace, I'll definitely find love. But the way I interact with these two persons of the Holy Spirit is different. Kakati, when sinkane echisa, mbutufu mba sinkane okuagala, na yengeri jenkola gada muna ababidibano, yanja uro. Now when it comes to communion, that's the Holy Spirit. Wechitu kakukuse chimu, ato yomo yomo tukufu. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the, the communion even that you can do a word study and get to know what is the Bible talking about that you, when you want to commune, to have communion with God, you need the Holy Spirit. You will find it that relating more with the Holy Spirit binds you more in the love and the grace of God. I might doing well there. Are you there? Kwe gamba katonda abanga nyumba oyinzo okuyingira mu kizimbe kino ngoyita miliange satu. So God is like a house. You can enter into this building through uh, three entrances. But although they are the same entrances, but different approaches. Yeah, you enter into the same room, the same space, but you enter differently eh, through approaches. Give me, approaches. give me John 3, 6, uh, John 16, 23. Um, I'm doing an intro here, but it's very important. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Yes, And he says to them this. And in that day, you will ask me for nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father, in my name, huh? are you saying that? Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. No, what, now when I pray to Jesus, does he give me what I ask for? The Bible says yes. But it is saying to you, it is better to approach prayer with the entire trinity. In scope, that means I speak to the Father in the name of Jesus under the Holy Spirit. Are you there? Um, are you with me, friends? It is not inventing another God. It is knowing the protocol of the Spirit. I realized many years ago that whenever my children were asking me for something, they would send my, my third born, Nathan. So I asked Nathan, why is it always you? And they said they, he told me that the family realized that whenever I speak to you, you do things quickly. Now that wasn't in my express knowledge, but that is what I discovered that they know that Nathan knows my soft spot. And I know my, my elder daughter, once she says, Daddy, I know she wants something. <laughs> because often they call me pastor. Are you getting the picture? Um, you are not accessing a different person, but you are understanding the protocol of connection and love. Now, this is Jesus' teaching. We cannot underestimate his teaching. And he's saying the day is coming and it will be better that you address the Father in my name under the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
But again, you read your scriptures and you say that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now you have to select which name am I calling through? How do I call God when I need quick response? Because if you are a reader of your Bible, you shall see that whenever you are going to the Father, Jesus is the mediator. He's the middleman. Hallelujah. Are you still there? So he, he, I cannot reach the Father. No one goes to the Father except by me. That's divine protocol. That, that is something you teach yourself to know. That the right protocol is that Christ first and I reach the Father. Amina. Amina. He, he even put it in, he said, no one gets to the Father except by me. And he says, whatsoever you ask for in my name, I shall do it. Hallelujah. He, he, he brings out his name as as a means of, of, of transaction, Na spiritual transaction. So how do I access, access the Father? I access the Father through the Son. But the Son will tell you that the Holy Spirit is the one who is going to persuade you to go to the Son. No one comes to the Son unless he's lured by the Holy Spirit. Are you getting me? Mufuna. Eh? So if the Holy Spirit is the initiator of accessing the Holy Trinity then the Holy Spirit is very important. And Holy Spirit persuades you to the Son. The Son persuades you to the Father. Then the communion is entirely in the power of the Holy Ghost. You enjoying the Father, the Son, is all about the business of the Holy Ghost. That is what we call the economy of the Trinity. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let us make another step. Again, understanding the Trinity. We have the transcendent God the Father. Dwelling in timelessness, dwelling in omnipotence, dwelling in omniscience, dwelling in omnipresence. Incomprehensible. Unfathomable. When you start understanding him, you just bow down and watch. Do you understand that? Because he transcends. Last Saturday we had a discussion. Trying, trying to, to fathom. We knew we wouldn't fathom. But it's not bad to try. So we said, let us understand the Father. He is timeless. <laughs> now that alone, <laughs> it means he has no beginning, has no end. One person was asked, was it Martin Luther? 
he, he was asked what was God doing before the beginning of the world. And he replied he was making help for people who ask questions like that. <laughs> the timelessness. Before anything existed, he measure, he's immeasurable with time. He, time is something he created, so you cannot ask how old is God. <laughs> Some people say, when did God begin? Beginning behind God, there is nothing. So there is no beginning behind God. So we, we capture the transcendence. In fact, when, when we are doing things for God, we uh, mainly in the old, old um, what is it, architecture designs, uh, they, they would build a steeple, something which is high. On, the, on top of the worship place. Mm. A steeple, yeah, something Ka like a cross up there. It doesn't matter whether a chapel is small, but they had to capture the transcendence of our God. Amina. Amina. Because in worship, you must catch the awesomeness of your God. You, you, must, be, you must be held, you must kwewunya. Before you kwewunya, you can't worship. So the transcendence is very important. And, and you need to let your mind sometimes go that way and think about how big your God is. Imagine he is self self existence is self his self sufficient self existence he does not depend on oxygen he does not depend on food god can be alone and be amina clap your hands to that for us, we need oxygen, we need food. There is something you are releasing to get something to survive. God exists, just He can just be. So when your mind catches the transcendence of God, then worship comes out easily, easily. There is, there is a brother, a friend of mine in Rwanda. He went to a place called Barbados. And uh, they, went, um, they went on a marine tour. They went on a boat, then got into a submarine. And he told me, Pastor, we, we went how many, th maybe a, a, a thousand feet down that ocean. And he told me, then when, you know, the, the submarine is made of glass on this side and this side. And he said he saw schools of thought of fish. He saw all kinds of creatures down the sea. He, he saw them through the glass. He saw, he saw trees under the water. He saw 
You know, Bionabye Yalaba Ngabi Mwe Uunyis. Yalaba Ye Miti Wa Nsi Wa Mazi, whatever is so was really amazing. White sand, red sand, mountains. Senyo Mwami Ufu Ensozi, Wa Yeo Mazi Ensozi. Then he said he reached a point and began crying. Naganti Yatuka Wa Ntunata Niko Kaba. Because he says, thousands die not knowing how rich our God has invested in those seas. Naganti Yenkumi Nenkumi Zifa. Not for us even to see. Some of us will never see that. But he feeds them. He looks after them. They are beautiful. And when you see all that, you just say, you are worthy to be praised. Romans 1.18 All the invisible attributes are in creation. You see all this and you embrace the transcendent God. So he's high up there. Above all powers. Above all stars. He is bigger than anything you have ever going to imagine. But then he makes himself expressed here on earth. In that sense, we talk about the incarnate God, God coming in the shape of Christ. Just to help you understand that the big God has made an expression that he may fit in your head. <laughs> And that is what we call Emmanuel, God with us. Do you understand that? <laughs> God, God is far. God with us is Emmanuel. That he comes from where he was above and comes to fit to, to be with us and becomes Emmanuel, God with us. That is Matthew 123. And he shall give birth to a child and you give him his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Now that we can talk the whole day about that because God making a stride to come down. <laughs> that that trillions of of, of how many I'm using a, an expression which is numerical he humbles himself trillions of times and he was born by a woman why he wants to connect with us can I get an amen in this house so when, when Jesus comes he is like what do you call it he is like a socket he is saying if you are seeking to be on the grid you will connect through here you want, you want to connect with transcendence. God is with us. God with us is redemptive. Amen. Amen. But then it goes better. And this is in John chapter 16, verse 7. Believe it or not, the transcendent God who became the incarnate God is an immanent God. I don't know how we can explain this. Okujisa. Okujisa. Oyo munene nyo. Ojo musonseke. Munanchi. Mumutu adye nanchi. Mumutu adye kazo. To bring someone who is so big and glorious and you fit him in someone who is in kazo. Nkolantia. How do I do this? Okusika katondo munene nyo. To draw a big 
God, a gigantic God. And I first make him a friend, Jesus. And I find a way of inserting him inside. Clap your hands to Jesus if you can do that. Now let, look at this one. This one is a knockout. Jesus served on earth. Yes, we are where is a consequence. Heal the sick. Now when you are made the blind see. Now Zibu na masoka ba mzibe. Made the lame walk. Now tambo zabarema. Mention a challenge Jesus was able to sort it out. Buli kusoma zako na kuhinzo kugera kwa Yesu na kusoboro kumara wao. He showed that gravity is his servant. He walked on the water. <laughs> if you don't know how big that miracle is, go, go try and stand on water in your basin. Bobato mani munene bwa chamagere chogendo fukama zimobafu ejure or inyeko tambo direko. Oja kula bechina atukao. Impossible things Jesus did. Let me tell you. On a daily basis, he was followed around by 5,000 men. Some people say it's about male chauvinism, but uh, it's also about explaining uh, that once you can divert a man's attention, and then you are a real person. Kakati abamu baro oza, nti kusosora, mchikura chaba, nti urachi bakuliriza nyoba sajja, na ye, nchintuchiri, nti buobo soboro kuwaluna, emiti majaba sajja, olimo sajja mozibu. Kwa mu sajja boye esi bakuchintu, tachita. Because when a man decides to follow something, he doesn't leave it. Na ye, yesu okuita wone babile kabyo, nane bagenda. But for Jesus coming by, and they forsake whatever five, they are doing, and five. Five thousand men. Aba, you, you pass them through this city and all the police will come out. 5,000 men. Not counting women and children. That was the traffic Jesus was causing daily. Someone said, when Jesus was around, you did not have to worry. For food, he will provide. For diseases, he will heal. He was a conduit. He was bringing transcendence down on earth. Yes, we have a wonga. Toy na kuera di kiri abe ba mere aja gabiri da abe ba burade aja kuonya yadi are sobwa katondo bo sukurumu nebuta ndiko kutambuli la konsi. Kubira yes we ngala utu ina mu. Jesus. Now, if you. You are following me. I'm bringing you the Trinity. None of them is a weak. It's a winning team. Right from, from Ovachi, Katonda, Yemu Wanguzi. Tewali's chance in Tiajakulu Zinga. Kubira Yesu Engalo Kwecho. He must win. The father is too big. The son, in an expression of humility, is too much. Chitafe Monene. Ato Mwananga. He's too much. Then he says this. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I'm going to send something to you. In other words, Jesus is saying, being with me is good. But when I go, I will make things better when the Holy Ghost comes. Come on, give God a clap of praise. Now, if you are a person who enjoys comparing Bibles, you will go and compare the word advantage. Uh, and, do, and do the word study for advantage. He's, he's literally saying, 
what you are seeing now is not as good as what is coming. One Bible says it is good that I go. Because when I go, something better is coming. You haven't understood it yet. Listen to another version. It says it is best that I go. Because something better is coming. I will convince you you will be... Number three, it is for your benefit that I go. <laughs> now you see the synonyms I'm bringing out. One, it is good. It is best. It is for your benefit. It is profitable. It is expedient. In other words, People, some people wish. Oh, I wish I, I was around when Jesus was walking the earth. Jesus is saying, no. It was better that I went. That you live in a better dispensation. Clap your hands to the Lord. So, my relationship with God is better when I'm relating with the Holy Ghost. It is better. It is advantageous. It is the best. It is profitable. So when I go to the entire Trinity, the Trinity agreed that people living in our dispensation will enjoy relating with God by relating to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you will realize the difference that will come into your life. The reason the Pentecostal church was very powerful here in the 80s. We were so much given to connecting with the Holy Ghost. But we have been relegating the Holy Ghost and we are saying Jesus only, but Jesus is saying it's better that I go that you learn to relate with the Holy Ghost. Gamma and the Holy Spirit, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Amen. It is better. Because from transcendence to incarnate to immanness he, he is in me he is not with me he is not far from me he is in you and hallelujah hallelujah I I used to say, stand Obe, in the mirror and say, Obe, how, how does that happen? Right. Hey. Right. Hallelujah. 
for the Holy Spirit to be in you. Mukama. God. Yes, Wagamba. Jesus says, It is profitable for you that I go. That the best may come. Now listen how your prayer is changing this you week. Are going to you are going to welcome come the Holy Spirit. And tell him come and inhabit in me. Because the Holy Spirit is going to be in you. Clap your hands to Jesus. 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 Clap Jesus. Let me use these 10 minutes to finish. It will be revealed to you that God is saying relate so much with the Holy Spirit. Relate more with the Holy Spirit. He will give you more speed to go to Jesus. And when Jesus and the Holy Spirit connect, they will accelerate your going to the Father. Or your mathematics. That kind of mathematics. Bishop Chirabira knows that. Momentum. Mass times gravity. Eh? Hey. I'm seeing that your mass time is gravity. Momentum is mass times acceleration. I'm seeing that you're going to be a big one. What is it? Yeah. I'm going to be a speed. Amen. 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 But when God sees that you have come with the Holy Spirit, He takes they are Jesus on you. And they accelerate you. They enter the Father's presence. That is making it as simple as possible. Second Timothy 1.14 will tell you that he dwells, Jesus dwells in us. <laughs> By the power of the Spirit. Uh-huh. Let us end this way. So giving, given the, the theme about the Holy Spirit being manifest. One time I remember preaching somewhere. Sincerely, I do not preach a lot about the Holy Spirit as I used in the past. But one day I was preaching about the Holy Spirit. And I had the voice tell me, well done today. You have spoken about what they need. Jesus says, when I rise, I will obtain the promise and pour him out to you. Actually, Jesus rose that he may release the Holy Spirit. I want you to say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe for the Holy Ghost. I believe for the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. I accept a better dispensation a better manifestation a better presence of the trinity in my times right now I call on the Holy Spirit 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 to fill me now Hallelujah Something is going to happen. When God wants to do something, his initiator is the Holy Spirit. Go read Genesis 1. He says the earth was formless and without shape. It was a mess. But the spirit of the Lord hovered over. Now that word hovering is also the same word as incubate. When you call the Holy Spirit in your shop, he incubates. Hallelujah. Amen.
He creates the atmosphere that will make the word of God creative. God does not speak where the Holy Ghost is not. He is the initiator of calling him visible things into being. The car you need will need you to be under the Holy Ghost that you may speak the word of God and things will be. Whatever situation you are going through, however ugly it is, however empty it is, however dark it is, when the spirit incubates a miracle is coming in the name of Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Even when you do not know how to pray, the Holy Spirit shall drive you in a place of prayer. Because he is the initiator of good prayer. So we begin with these formless things and we release the Holy Spirit. When Mary was told about the child she's going to bear, when Mary was told about the child she was going to bear, she said, but I don't know the man, any man. That is impossible. The angel said, the Holy Spirit shall overshadow you. And what you shall conceive will be a child of the Most High God. May God surround you. May God incubate your business. May God incubate your children. May God incubate your church. May God incubate your thoughts. Because once he sends the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will open a new door. Father, on this address in Kazo, we call for the moving of the Holy Spirit. For it is better that you went away that the Holy Spirit may come. Tonight, beginning on these three days of talk about the Holy Ghost, may your spirit manifest. May people be filled with the Holy Ghost. May this house be full with power. On Friday, everyone baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues and bringing healing in the, your children. Yeah.